We're talking about the new album from the band Diet Sig, and it's called Do You Wonder About Me? And they're an indie rock duo from New Paul's, New York, mm. consisting of guitarist, vocalist Alex Luciano and drummer Noah Bauman. And the two met at a house party in the summer of 2014 and were making music together by the fall. They uh, released the EP and the seven inch on independent label Father Daughter Records in 2015 and were playing South by Southwest by the following year. Then they put out the debut album, Swear I'm Good at This, in 2017, and they gave them a little more exposure. They got an interview with the Spin Magazine and a spot on the Auto Tree uh, Music Festival in Michigan. And uh, similar to the first record, this sophomore album was released through the label French Kiss Records and features 90s-esque alt-rock as a backdrop to a very personal lyrics. Now, this is a band I've never listened to their previous work before. Um, same for you? Yeah, I've never even heard of them. Uh, the opening track, Thriving, it's got the distorted indie rock sound you expect to hear from like bands like Pavement from back in the 90s. And Alex is pondering, do you ever wonder about me? Which is, I think, where they got the title of the album from. <laughs> I'm doing some research here. Yeah. Um, so I figured this song is about a previous relationship she had, and she will never hate herself the way you want her to, because in the end, she's thriving. Thanks for asking. Let's get into her vocals, how you felt about that, the way she sings. Um, what do you think I'm going to say? You like it? Uh, because she seems very earnest and honest, but at the same time, you feel like it's not too uh, mind-blowing because in some cases, she has a slightly generic ranges. Uh, <laughs> you were going to say quite. exactly that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I hated her voice. I couldn't stand it. Oh, you weren't being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really? Yeah. I hated it. So at first... The way I was just thinking of it was that it sounded like um, like a Disney princess movie soundtrack. Okay. And like she's like the Disney princess. But then I realized that it sounds like one of the songs that they get like, like a singer who's famous at that time to sing like the popular song from the movie during the end credits. Ah, okay. And that is the worst part of any Disney princess movie album. Hmm. I could hear that, yeah. I feel the same way a little bit, but I've tried to like block it out and try to pay attention to what she's singing about. And I'm like, okay, there's two breakup songs in a row. Like, what else you got? Hmm. And then when she got to Night Terrors, it was a bit more of a poppier sound, and the guitars were like more cleaner and the percussion was lighter. So what the title suggests is that you know she has trouble sleeping and she's prone to screaming in the middle of her dreams. And I was like, you know, I never heard this topic in a, a song before. And I don't really relate to it, but I commended her on that as least. Were you able to ignore her voice and hear what she was talking about on that song where she's really opening up? I didn't really see it as opening up. I don't know. I didn't really find there was anything she was singing about anything deep. If I remember correctly, this might not be true, but I think all or I'll say most of the songs are relationship or breakup songs and i think that this is another one mm -hmm. um it's she, i don't think she's actually singing about like the disorder like having night terrors it's like a sleep disorder yeah i get that i think on the other hand i think her voice is great and when i say that i think it's okay <laughs> uh, I, I think she sings softly at times or she's like sweetly in her high octaves but in the end i feel like she's almost as generic as this album itself like whether it's like this grungy like tune like the song Broken Body or like a more bubbly grunge pop song like uh, Stare Into the Sun, I feel like they just take like the basic ingredients of the average lo-fi indie rock of the 90s and add nothing innovative to it. So it's basically like they come to you and it's like, hey, do you like Sonic Youth or the Pixies to a degree? Like, do you remember the female front of the alternative band called Letters to Cleo? No? Great. That means you won't scrutinize us too harshly. Unfortunately for them, I remember Letters to Cleo. 
Uh, the only song I felt on this album that was somewhat of a standout was the song Flash Flood because it's like this random upbeat punk track. Kind of sound like the bomb pops that we reviewed in earlier in the year, which I think is kind of cool, but it's so out of nowhere with like the rest of the run in the mill songs on this album. It makes me more angry it's here in the first place because it doesn't fit. That's a good point. Yeah, and I agree. That was like one of the only songs I liked. I think I liked maybe two songs. What was the other song you kind of liked? I liked Broken Body. Mm -hmm. Why? I just liked that it was like that she was actually talking frankly about like being depressed or hating herself or something like that. So see, the lyrics got to you finally. But just for one song. And I even (laughs) said, this is a relatable song, but I can't get past how much I hate the sound of the song itself. (laughs) (laughs) What about the fact that there's like two songs on this album, Make Out, Interlude, and Priority Mail that are so short. I'm like, why did you bother recording this? Because the it's album's like, already only like 24 minutes. <laughs> so we got to put our 50 second song on there. <laughs> like, yeah. Priority Mail is like literally about sending a package to someone. So it's not a, oh, actually, it probably might be a relationship song because <laughs> that is a relationship you're having with the recipient, right? Yeah. In any case. So Caroline mentioned lyrics before. I think it's kind of great how she opens up about relationships, but she really uh, doesn't have much to say about them. I feel like I learned nothing from her listening to this album except for she's this typical indie chick who is content being at home, writing in her journal while she waters her plants. And people are like, wow, she's so an introvert, blah, blah. But she seems less unique the less she tells me. Hmm. We were talking about how short the album is, and that's the compliment I'm giving the album. It, it felt it, long, though. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, it ends with like this unnecessary like synth ambient version of Night Terrors. Yeah. And the boredom I felt made the album feel much longer in general. Yeah. It's only 10 tracks, and surprisingly, we were talking less than half an hour. If you don't listen to the last song and you ignore the two like interludes, mm-hmm. now we're down to um, seven songs, and it still feels too long. Yeah. It's not horrible. I was hoping, being a two-piece band, that they would be more interesting. And to be honest, you can hear the bass guitar in the song, so it's like, you don't sound like a two-piece band to me. Yeah. You sound like, like a full fresh three-piece band. You're getting, you obviously got someone in the studio to play bass. Just put them True. in the band already, so you don't have to be getting this White Stripes comparison or whatever other bands that were popular when garage rock was a thing. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say they sound like the type of group, uh, if you kind of saw them in a house party or at a bar or you were passing by at a music festival and they were playing, you'd appreciate their stage presence more than sitting through the records that they actually put out. And I'm sure people are complimenting them on the lyrics and nostalgia of their sound, but I feel like what you hear on here is a lot of wasted potential. So I'm going to say you can skip this album. Uh Let's hope that Caroline, for the sake of you fans out there, or if they're listening themselves, she's not as harsh as I am. Um, Yeah, well, I mean, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, that it was really boring. There was no personality. It was very, like, cookie cutter. The songs were all really similar to each other. Um, Some of them were catchy, but, like, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good song. Um, And a lot of them were very, very repetitive. Any, like, potentially deep meanings they had or they were trying to deliver was like overshadowed by just like the pure like insufferability of the song um the guitars were good i thought they were like the drums were good and i'm um, thank christ this album was so short or else it would have gotten a lower rating skip this All right yeah sorry you guys we both think it's not worth your time but i think they could definitely take some advice from us and make a little bit better album with with talent you can obviously hear musically anyway yeah Uh, if you heard uh, the latest album from diet sig let us know in the comment section what you think and you can also send us a longer email if you have more to say because i have a feeling that they have quite a fan base going on in uh, new york and everything like that and Mm. love to read all that anger you have just bring it to your fingers and start typing away (laughs) 